Hi everyone and welcome uh, to Tech Tuesday. My name is Dr. Haifa Mamar. I'm the Executive Director of Emerging Technologies here at Fusara University. And today we're streaming live on Facebook, LinkedIn and YouTube. So welcome everyone on all these platforms. Um, so today our episode will be about the size of performance metrics and specifically in the esports field and how esports athletes are trying to or are really using these performance metrics uh, to step up their game uh, and um, better like have have a better performance as they're playing uh, so we're really going into uh, sports monitoring into sports technology uh, with uh, my guests today dr sean stafford and skylar richards how are you, how are you guys very good Great. so before you introduce yourself um, i wanted today really we're going to be talking more about the partnership that we have with full cell university and orlando health specifically when it comes to uh, our our um, uh, esports athletes and how Orlando Health is helping our esports athletes looking at their performance, improving their performance, and what kind of technology they're using to help uh, with that. So, thank you guys. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us today. I'm really happy to have you here, and I'm, I'm pretty sure that our audience is really eager to learn more about how they can uh, look at their performance from a technology perspective, really be aware of their um, physical, um, um, how to say it, uh, physical performance, mental performance, and so on, to improve their performance, their general uh, performance. So uh, I'm going to start with you, Skylar. Welcome uh, to Tech Tuesday. We're very happy to have you with us today. Uh, Skylar, can you please introduce yourself and then talk more about um, your background and how did you get into this field uh, and um, what you do today with Orlando Health, please? Yeah, excellent. I'm really excited to be here. So um, I have a bachelor's in athletic training, and that's really a degree in sports medicine and on-field athletic care and then a master's in exercise physiology. Mm -hmm. I'm doing a lot of um, doctorate work we'll talk about later in um, capacity metrics and really merging those fields of exercise physiology with sports medicine. And I, I've applied that viewpoint over um, about 20 years now in the industry, mostly in professional soccer as director of sports science and physiology and head athletic trainer in different roles in different teams. And now taking that across all of our sports partnerships with Orlando Health, the really forward um, thinking hospital who really cares about taking care of all their athletes whether they're injured or not making sure they know we care about them so that when they do get injured they care about us that's amazing and we're going to be talking more about how orlando health is really looking into our esports athletes and how they're helping them uh, understand the, um, um, the impact of what they're doing on their health both on their physical health and mental health um, Dr. Sean Stafford, I'm really happy to have you again with me Pleasure on Tech here. Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, can you please uh, introduce yourself to our audience and then, I mean, everyone knows you here. Uh, you are mm. <laughs> Director of Research, you yeah. are in the Game Design Master's Program, yep. the Director of the UX Lab. But now, specifically with this project, and we'll be talking, Skylar will explain what is this relationship that we have between Orlando Health and Full Cell. Uh, but how did you get into, and I I mean, it's, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a normal um, um, trajectory on how you will be on this. Uh, but can you please uh, talk about uh, your background again, remind mm -hmm. our audience of your background and uh, how did you end up on this project? Yeah, so I, I have a, a, a doctorate in human factor psychology, which is human performance psychology. And I've worked in the military and in sports for a long time now, 23 years. And uh, I've always loved performance and uh, measuring performance. And uh, when I when I was going to grad school, 9-11 had just occurred and you know, I was walking the, the hallways and there were some scholarly looking individuals talking about measuring human capacity and measuring stress and how much you can perform under stress. And, and I fell in love with it. And, and, you know, this relationship here is an extension of that. I mean, we're really using, um, you know, monitoring devices, some really cool technology, uh, the whoop strap and we get to use it with our wonderful partner Orlando Health and our esports athletes and it's um, just a great relationship and looking forward to 
all the feature stuff we do with them. So, uh, Sean, you were um, uh, one of the key players originally that uh, was uh, in uh, the um, um, creation of the partnership between Orlando Health and Full Sail University. Can you tell us more about how did that come together? And then, Skylar, if you can also tell us on how that now relationship evolved to what we're doing today. Yeah, I mean, uh, so, um, you know, we, we have this amazing esports team and, um, you know, the, the, all the faculty and leadership that, that uh, supports that. And uh, it, it, it's just it's such an opportunity to work with health partners, uh, Orlando Health, and um, bring all the expertise they have to that uh, domain. And I, I remember going to the kickoff meeting. It was such an amazing meeting. I met Skylar there. And that's opened up doors to other relationships, and I get to work with Skylar's team, which is just a wonderful ex a learning experience for me. And uh, w what was fascinating was is the athletes that were there, and they're probably not here anymore because you know they're, they've graduated, but they they fell in love with what we we could do from a health performance position by yeah. having access to. Uh, you know, Orlando Health and, and Skyler's team. And I'll turn it over to Skyler on the, the, the rest of that. Yeah, if you can explain how did that relationship now evolve and what are we doing today? And specifically, if you can introduce this SWOOP technology that we'll be talking about today. Yeah, I think what's important to know is that healthcare organizations are usually the number one and number two top sponsorship um, partners for all professional teams. And every um, entity I've been with it's always been a high priority to have that partnership, but it, it's largely been uh, a an informal, a name on jersey, a name on a signboard type of relationship. And when I got to Orlando Health in my final years in my Major League Soccer career, it was very obvious that they had a passion for making a meaningful relationship mm -hmm. out of the partnership. Mm -hmm. And I was very impressed with their amount of service and their detail and, and their really commitment to to making their athletes have the best service possible. So much so that, that I came over to Orlando Health full-time to form their performance health team. And really what we do is we take the great opportunities through all our partnerships that, that um, Jackie Hader and her team um, have uh, provided us with, which is almost 20 high schools now, five colleges and and for professional organizations to be able to service their athletes and make meaningful encounters with them, make differences in their health and their ability to perform. And that's so important to say because it means that the hospital cares about their physiology, their well-being when they're healthy, not just when they're injured, not just when they're ill. And that's so unique for a hospital to put the energy and the effort into that side of things so that, again, we convince people we care about them all the time, especially as athletes, and we want them to perform. And if they need us, we're here for them. And that was inspiring enough for me to, to create and dig into all the partnerships and say, how do we make them the best relationships possible? And in full sale, what, we fa what I found was the ability to take a very unique athlete population and say, yes. how do we teach them about making their physiology better can help them perform? just like we know it happens in sports. And I was really happy to find that uh, across the eSport industry, um, the, the international and U.S. eSports federations have really put a lot of stock into this to show healthy body, healthy minds initiatives and to, to really merge that mindset of feel good, play good, perform well, right? And, and how can we take that to our athletes and do that? And so the, the way we wanted to, to start off when I met with Dr. Stafford was how can we show them and really give them objective ways to measure where their physiology is right now? And we'll get into the reasons why. We really found that WHOOP being a device that measures heart rate, heart rate variability, um, sleep, uh, respiration, um, and uh, I'm sure a few other things I'm forgetting, but through their PPG and their accelerometry technology helps us connect with them and individualize their um, care and their advice to help them be the best athletes they can be. So I, 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 I agree with you that I'm going to go back to how Orlando Health is now approaching um, um, sports in general as that we're try they're trying to be 
uh, preventive, as trying to really help uh, athletes understand their um, um, their performance, trying to prevent any kind of injuries in general, injuries or other health risks that can happen uh, because they really care about their athletes, so they really care about uh, uh, their patients. Um, and um, this, the WHOOP technology, this new initiative that we started with uh, our uh, esports team, the Armada team here at Full Sail University, um, when we're talking, first of all, when we're talking about gay uh, sports, um, sometimes people, they don't necessarily understand that esports is really a how does that compare to a regular sports? Uh, you know, so we would be talking more about that from really uh, educating our audience that not only the mental health of it is important, but also the physical health is very important as well. Even though they're sitting uh, and playing, there is a lot that is happening. And Skylar, later on, you will explain from um, a, a health performance, physical performance, how that is equivalent to other sports that exist. Um, but I want to go back to WHOOP and then Skylar, you started um, mentioning some of the metrics um, that we are getting here uh, or trying to collect here to understand um, the performance tracking, uh, 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 like this performance tracking device. But I want you please to go now, now in details. Explain this WHOOP technology. I know that both of you actually have it. Um, you're wearing the device right now. Mm -hmm. If you can really uh, explain uh, what kind of um, metrics we're collecting. Uh, for me specifically, uh, if I, I understand wearables, and I've worked with wearables before. I know that we're really looking into uh, the heartbeat, or we're looking, and, and from the heartbeat, then also your um, breathing. How, how uh, so? All of that can lead into other things that you can look at or and uh, kind of conclude to get what kind of metrics you're looking into. Um, so I want you, please, if uh, you can, really explain to us low level here <laughs> to our audience what is happening with this uh, with the whoop technology yeah, it's really fun for me to see this come full circle so in, in my kind of path along um, sports technology I really got into that field because at the um, right when I was in doing my masters I decided to do an exercise cardiology only because it's the first sports monitoring technology ever came out, which was the Polar Team 1. And that allowed us for the first time to monitor um, complete teams and their heart rate load and how much work they, they were doing on the field. And that was so fascinating to me. And we realized that that was one system we need to measure other systems. So now we've developed GPS systems, wearable EMG, thermography, wearable motion analysis, lots of different things. And all that still is we're learning is only performance metrics what your body did okay and what's so interesting now is that I believe that this HRV and we'll get into that in a second technology is really the pioneer of a whole different way to look at the body is not only what it did but instead how it responded to that stress mm -hmm. right so heart rate variability it was really our first window into that in saying I don't know what you did or how well you did at it but I know your body didn't like it or it didn't handle it well or handled it really well and HRV is such a unique um, uh, first step into that and I like to explain it like um, when you're an Olymp watching Olympic level um, swimmer and when they first get in the pool and they, f and they start their first laps, okay, they're going very consistently, their upper body's working well, and their lower body's just kicking when it needs to. Not all the time, and not necessarily consistently, right? But only when they need to. But as their upper body fatigues and that stress uh, comes in, their lower body starts to kick more consistently. Okay. So what does that mean for, for the heart? So what it means is when we're sitting here at 60 beats a minute, which is usually what your, your resting heart rate is, it's not every second on the beat, okay? If we're recovered, it beats, may rest a little bit, it'll beat a couple times, rest a little bit, and the average of that over a minute is 60 beats for the minute, okay? okay? okay. But if we're fatigued and the body has to get the blood out, to recover and deliver oxygen and all the other nutrients to the body, it's going to be on that one beat a second rhythm, 
consistently because it needs to get the, the the deliverables out and so that's not that's that variability is then very very low so high variability very recovered low variability more consistency not recovered more fatigued mm -hmm. and so now looking at that we're able to see what state of recovery you are in and how you responded to the stress from the days before okay wow <laughs> that's i mean i'm impressed uh, uh like I, I love these things and specifically everything that comes with healthcare and understanding your body and how your body is reacting to all these external factors uh is is impressive uh, and very interesting to me uh, so now if we're looking at Esports specifically, we're talking general here. Oh, those those are the metrics that are collected by Whoop. But then, when it comes to esports specifically, yes, we talked about your recovery and and heartbeat. But then, uh, Sean, um, depending on the games genre, mm -hmm. like the, I, I don't know. Maybe you know. Uh, if you're looking into that, I would love to understand. If are we looking at specific metric depending on the game? that they're playing uh, or not and what are some of the fundamental performance metrics that are we are looking at in esports specifically yeah <clears throat> a lot of the the metrics that um, we look at in esports are, are related to the cognitive abilities we have available at the moment and we mm -hmm. we often call that you know executive function cognitive capacity and that's uh, things like reaction time uh, complex decision making, simple decision making, um, the ability to reject signals that don't matter and in execute on signals that do matter, this signal detection theory. You know, all these things can be measured. And what's really wonderful about bringing in something like WHOOP and, and Orlando Health is now we can look at the capacity to excel in those metrics. And that's really what we're looking at here when we bring in a, in a device for, for athletes as we're saying, we're going to put you in a position where you have the knowledge to understand you know what goes into your body creates this formula of your capacity to do executive function to you know to do all those things that matter for video gaming and um, so you know, taking decisions being fast about yeah reacting yeah. and so on because. yeah being as a, as accurate and as 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 quick as needed as possible mm -hmm. and so making the right decision at the right time yeah and that Kept, that's part of all sports. You know, it's not just esports. That's, you know, soccer, football, basketball. There's that decision making that is constantly occurring, and there's there's components. There's things that we need to understand about our body that you know we can we can learn from using a strap like Whoop and say, oh, this is where I need to put myself, and these are things I shouldn't do, and these are things I should do. And, you know, there's some things that, um, you know, maybe I need to take a break, you know, in the future in order to hit my peak potential the next day. Those are all some of the wonderful things that you get from wearing a monitoring device like Whoop. So now each athlete is aware of everything that's happening. They need to track every kind of aspect of their life in order to have kind of a general and really detailed granular view of how their body is reacting to this. Yeah, it, so uh, what's nice about it is it's it's um, there's a lot of different technologies out there where you can input your, you know, what you eat and, you know, your activities that you do. They kind of bring it all together. So the more you you put, you know, detail out your inputs of your daily life, like what you've done, the better the algorithm is for you. And so after about 30 days of detailed tracking, you get a really nice predictive model of performance. Obviously, the less detail you put into it, the more the model is requesting like, oh, you know, you should track this or maybe you can give me this information, et cetera. So you can put in your workout times, start and stop times for practices, start and stop times for games, label all that stuff, uh, your food, interesting events that happen throughout the day like arguments or whatever else, all that goes into the uh, the algorithm to give you you know then whoop gives that output and says hey this is your performance model and here's some advice you should do these things you might mod modify your behavior and then of course you know you have your medical professionals too orlando health should you need further assistance 
available. They would be available yeah. for you. So um, my next question, and I kind of feel like you already answered this, is how do you define success? And how do you measure success when we're collecting all this data and understanding these performance metrics? So uh, when I look at success when it comes to this particular strap, it's the potential. Of what it, it gives. Yeah. Okay. The potential to hit elite performance. And, you know, something like Whoop or um, any of the, the monitoring devices, they won't tell you how to be better at your video game or your activity. But what they will do is say, you're in an optimal state for peak performance. And that sets you apart from the other competitors. And they might not be in an optimal state, state, but because you're tracking and monitoring, listening to your body and, you know, and making changes, you now can perform at an elite level. And that's where these devices have all come from. They've all come from the elite athlete world. And once they get it tuned to elite athletes, then they fix the user interface and make the device more accessible, maybe bring the price down, and then, you know, it goes down to the collegiate level and then it hits the general market. So by the time it gets to us, it's been refined. And you know, it's like, okay, this is exactly what you might need to do to put yourself into the best situation possible to perform, which you know, at the elite level, 2%, 3% can mean the difference between a win and a loss. Skylar, uh, are there uh, specific performance metrics that are um, um, particularly effective in identifying areas of improvement uh, when we're talking about player skills, uh, whether in general, like in sports or esports. Uh, I mean, you work in both, and mm -hmm. I mean, it may be sometimes may be different depending on the sports, but what is it exactly that um, some of those uh, performance metrics that make it, uh, make, uh, make the performance better? Yeah, and I think I like how Sean um, really described it there is that we're trying to give you the, the highest amount of capacity to perform. And so I'd like to say, how can we look at preparedness? How can we look at reaction? And then how can we look at detractors, right? So what things, and, and, and to your point earlier, there's so many things you can track, right? Too many things. So the, the, the path and, and the the process is then to figure out which ones affect you the most or which ones are the most effective for you to then optimize your performance, yes. right? So now we look at those things and take away detractors, elimination of detractors, right? So um, we look at performance in your sport based on anything, so reaction time, right? Consistency, um, speed, all those things, even in esports, especially in esports, where we can measure every single aspect of your performance. Everything we wish we could have done in, in, in normal sports, we're able to measure every bit of it, your positioning, your reaction time, your angle, um, all that stuff within your game we can measure because it's all digital. Can you go more in details into that specifically? Why is it feasible in esports and not feasible in other sports where uh, you're not really able to collect all that data and measure all that data. However, for esports, you have all that data available to you. Yeah, the digital nature of it allows you to then track every p piece of it, right? Your angle of your, of your shot, right? Your speed to acceleration in a racing game, right? Your positioning tactically on the map, right? Your speed to position, right? Your, your change of camera angle. All those things that affect our sensories into our body and our ability to make decisions back into the system are measured. Mm -hmm. So it's fascinating. It's almost too much, right? But again, now we can say, what are our biggest ones? And we'll take reaction time as an obvious one, right? Ability to react and how fast we should react, right? Okay, that's great. Maybe we shouldn't have reacted. Um, maybe we reacted too fast, right? Those are performance metrics when you're having that conversation. Okay. But if, especially, for example, if I reacted slow every time, okay, and then I can see that my sleep score was the lowest it's been. Now I'm seeing I had a detractor to my performance that can obviously be addressed, and that's where we come in. So 
actually, my next question was that um, how can esports athletes effectively integrate WHOOP data in their, uh, into their training routines? And does WHOOP technology uh, provide any kind of insights to improve their performance or uh, Im improve how uh, their daily routines? I would say. Yeah, yeah, it's a it's a great question, I, and that's one of the reasons why we 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 selected Whoop is. It, it can auto detect activities, but you can also input activities. So if you routinely do an activity that has a physiological profile and you enter a label for that, it will start to actually tell you later on, oh, you've done this activity again, and it will add a label to it. And when it comes to coaching, one of the things we know about uh, professional athletes and esports athletes. So the, there's a high level of introverted individuals in this field. Yes, they're very focused on their skill set and becoming masters of that skill set. And you know, when you look at it, you're like, wow, I didn't realize so many professional athletes were extremely introverted. So when it comes to seeking out a coach, it's really helpful to have a coach within the application. And what Whoop has done is they've integrated um, uh, OpenAI into their uh, device and they take all their their metrics and all all the inputs you've put into it and they build a basically a coaching system and the reason it's so important to have something like ai in there is when we ask a doctor a question about our health we ask it in our own language and we want that answer to come back oftentimes in something we can understand and that's what they're allowing us to do. So I can. That's amazing. Yeah, it is. It's great. And you know, I've I've asked it questions like, should I work out today? What type of exercise should I do? I have an hour to work out, like, you know, and I have this amount of strain that I can hit for that day, and it will tell you. You should advise you. You know, you should do this, this, and this. But probably when it, when we're talking about AI and everything that we do, and especially now with the AI revolution, you have some human. Um, uh, um, involvement, and I, I guess in this case specifically, you you're going to have your team, Skylar, uh, the subject matter experts who, who un understand the data, understand everything. Even if the AI is suggesting some initial things to do, but then the your team and the professional health health team. They will be uh, the performance team. They will be looking more into the now to the athletes to help them understand their data and improve their data. Right. That's right. So the, the AI helps to get the conversation um, started for them and lets them dig in at their own pace, which is really important because we want them bought in and we want them interested in their own health almost before they come to us, right? And when they understand that this can help them, then we're here to help them take that to the, the, the pinnacle of application that it can be. But also, it helps us with scalability. So what's interesting in esports athletes, uh, as opposed to, to traditional sports, where I can be in front of all 30 uh, players on the team all at once, esports athletes are, are traditionally remote. Right, they can be remote, up, that's true. Yeah. Yes. And so it's harder to scale ourselves and be on every call all the time or be available. And I don't want anyone not to apply this data to help make themselves better because of our availability. So at least they can start that conversation. And then after a while of trial and error, then we can really work with them one-on-one -on -one to apply it to their sport in the best way possible with our sports knowledge that AI hasn't caught up to yet. And then we are able to then translate that also to the coach and connect that between the, the athlete and the coach for a group type success rate. I love that. So let's um, move into um, individual versus team metrics. Um, uh, so when we're talking about we're collecting all this data, I mean, individually, everyone. But then how, uh, how does uh, or how do performance metrics differ when you're eva evaluating an individual athlete versus a team uh, performance. Yeah, you really want to look at um, the, the trends for a team and how it applies especially for their specific needs. And I think what's really interesting is this evolving uh, view of taking classical uh, energy systems and different demands of, of traditional sport into esports game by game, whereas yes. each game is a different sport right in the traditional sense and we look at it from an energy system perspective of of if we compare like a, a longer term racing um, game right where you, where you may have 10 15 minutes of consistent activity and you want your body to operate 
between that 70 80 percent of of capacity so that you can be consistent in your decision making your reaction times and all those as opposed to a very high intense two to three minute bout of something really goes into sprinting type on traditional sports right basketball even when you can sub in and out as much as you want and, and looking at the physiology more comparatively to those where you want to be able to go at 90 percent for shorter bouts of time and then recover and let your body recover and your heart rate respond, right? So looking at those for the team and the group approach to make sure we're all kind of hitting those marks as a unit makes sense because the team is unified by the sport or the game they're playing, right? And then within that, we start to look individually at potential detractors that are unique to that person. So what kind of challenges arise when you're trying to quantify a teamwork and the communication between team players when it comes to um, performance metrics? Yeah, I think the, the culture that you're able to build when people are physically together it is so important. And Sean and I talk about it all the time when we work with other uh, local-based professional teams and how you can build that culture and how it actually helps you be more efficient and effective by spreading the, the, the knowledge that, that you're teaching there between people. When you can get athletes to teach each other, now you're causing that domino That's effect great. which yeah. actually makes That's change, mm -hmm. right? And it's peer pressure in a way. Mm -hmm. yeah. so, uh, like uh, if some team members are specifically really, um, uh, how to say it, um, um, following kind of the um, uh, suggestions, recommendation from from your team or from the WHOOP, then you yeah. have now other people joining, other team players joining. And often we call uh, positive peer pressure leadership, exactly. right? Exactly, yeah. Right? So that's you true. have that ability to have leadership, and you don't when everybody's remote and they don't see anybody. So that's a unique challenge with this environment of how do we build that culture almost digitally, how do we build it remotely and stay in touch with them so that it does become um, synergistic with itself. So... As we're talking about all these performance metrics, one thing that I notice you talking about a lot, and, and which is normal, it's recovery. And as we're talking about recovery, also, Sean, you kept talking about the importance of sleep mm -hmm. and how is that going to impact uh, your um, next day performance or other day's performance and, and so on. So um, can you really explain in what ways does WHOOP contribute um, to understanding the importance of recovery and sleep uh, and um, to our, for our esports athlete? Yeah, and you know, it, it's not to lecture, but I will. It's uh, sleep is I the one. I mean, you're, you're yeah. like a professor uh, here, so of lecture, course you're going to lecture sure. everyone. <laughs> uh, we, we don't get proper sleep. No, very few people do. And as a matter of fact, we have all these sayings in life. It's like work harder, do longer, practice more, do all these things to achieve more. And what's interesting is, is there's very little data on the individual to suggest whether that's right or wrong. So you end up with these arguments of like, okay, what well, do we over practice and et cetera? And how much do we practice and what do we do? Recovery is that, that component of, of life that tells you what is your, what's your capacity to perform that particular day? And sleep plays such a big role in that. And one of the things I really like about how, how WHOOP does their, their sleep, co sleep component is it, it breaks it down into the stages for you very nicely. So you have, you know, your, your stage one, two, and three of the, from light sleep to deep sleep, and then you have your REM sleep and you have your awake cycles. And it really digs into the quality of sleep that you've received. But it also understands if you're wearing your device for a long period of time, what impacts your sleep based on the activities you've done, specifically strain. So strain can be good, it can be bad. If strain is stressful, it, it typically is bad, you know, especially if it's mental strain, which WHOOP does track. Um, if it's physical strain, that can actually be positive as long as it's within your recovery limits. So if you go to the gym and you really push yourself and you're doing all these exercises, you can overstrain your body. That will then impact your sleep, and then you'll have a poor recovery day the next time. And so recovery is a score you get every single day. What the algorithm will start to do over time is look for patterns and make suggestions. You should do this. You should not do this. You should you know, take some time off now. And I think that's really valuable because 
working harder is not the correct way to do things when it comes to performance at the elite level. It's working smarter. And so you have to be in tune with your body and you have to know when you should take some time off to get that recovery score higher so you can hit peak performance versus pushing on. And so, you know, the algorithms are nice in this because it does give you this, like, how much strain you should hit in the day. And it also tells you exactly how much sleep you should get. But it really does a good job of looking at the details of it. And if you've had a very stressful day, the quality of sleep will go down and it will be very specific. Okay, this is, this is what you're looking at. And, you know, when it comes to esports, sleep is, it's, it impacts everything in life. It impacts uh, just about every negative ailment that we have uh, going on in our lives, whether it's diabetes, cancer, heart ailments. It's all hit by sleep. We can either make those things worse or make them better. And so everybody has something going on and controlling that sleep component, oh, that just makes you optimal. And some of the, you know, the elite athletes, I was watching a, a podcast, you know, Whoop, and they were talking about uh, LeBron James gets 12 hours of sleep a day. That's like, you know, he got criticized on social media for it and this and that, but that's what his body needs given what he is expending. So the more you expend in terms of energy, the more sleep you need. And I think that's sort of the fun of tracking your data as you can start to see that. I mean, I cannot help it, but I mean, this is not for athletes only. Uh, people um, um, need to understand uh, their body, um, um, need to, I mean, professionals in general, like not specifically athletes, they need to really keep track of what's happening, uh, specifically if uh, I'm going to talk about myself. Uh, I've noticed that if I have a um, very stressful week, um, sometimes my performance, especially if I'm presenting or something, sometimes it gets affected. And, and I try to be, um, how to say it, conscious and aware about it. But having a system like this, a, a wearable like this, that's really keeping track, giving you data. Now it's not just in your head. It's really on your phone and tracking you, making sure that, hey, wake up. Hey, you need to take a break or like you need to exercise or you need to wor work out or you need to just take a breathing meditation, whatever you need to do or sleep more, go to bed. <laughs> so yep. in a way... Uh, and I think, Skylar, this is really what yeah, your team is about, right? Yeah, I think that's really one of the reasons that we uh, redefined our department as performance health. Because as long as you're an individual trying to perform at anything, whether it be athletics or whether it be a decision making, and whether you're a CEO, whether you're a race car driver, whether you're any of those shades in between, right? If you're trying to perform, your physiology allows you to perform. And what is performance? Performance, you know, is trying to find the pinnacle of human ability. And even if you're every day, it's what is your pinnacle? How consistent can I be every day? How much emotionally can I be there for my kids and my family, right? How much physically can I perform at work every day? All those things. So how can we help you learn about your body, get it repaired and back in the state where it has the potential to to perform its best, most consistently for whatever your need is. And you're seeing the shift in healthcare, especially with with my um, my industry, athletic training, and athletic trainers being in um, corporate settings more, working with CEOs, working with complete staffs, being in an industrial setting, really helping people be consistent at their performance and their job and their life all the time. Amazing. Well, thank you for doing that. Uh, uh, I, I really, uh, I, I feel like I need to get more into this. <laughs> but, okay, so we talked about performance, and you described it earlier as, um, um, I think you had three, I, I wrote just two, is physical performance and mental performance. So I, I want to go into the psychological factors and uh, metrics. And to what extent do psychological factors such as the mindset or mental resilience impact the performance metrics in esports? <clears throat> yeah, I think uh, in, in sports in general, especially as you get to the elite levels, there's a lot of stress and it's, it's a tough environment. I, you know, I've got two young kids and I, through Skylar's relationships, I get to work with um, elite athletes. And Sometimes I wonder, is like, do I want my kids to go into that environment? Because it's incredibly taxing on their mental faculties all day long. From the time they wake up to the end of the day when they're going to bed, there's a lot of anxiety. There's a lot of stress. 
you know. And so what's interesting about that is that all impacts you. And I think the more you become aware of that, that just thinking negatively or dwelling on something, that creates a stress score in your body. And that reduces your capacity for other things. And, you know, I've had days where I've had a very stressful day in meetings and this and that. I'm sure you you have. And it'll tell you, like, something happened today. Your, your, your strain is much higher than it should be. And it predicts that's going to impact your sleep cycle. That's going to impact tomorrow's recovery. And you're not going to be at peak performance. And so, we, you know, I, I call it dwelling. It's like, okay... There's these things going on. Obviously, this is the stressful event that maybe led to this higher score. The more you track that stuff, the better things like Whoop will be at predicting that and saying, oh, by the way, if you're going to get back into this event again, you're going to do X, Y, and Z, need to do X, Y, and Z with your recovery, with your sleep. And so I think it's fascinating to that just giving people an awareness that the mental side of things is, is it can be tracked. And you can then work around that. And that's where you can reach out to some of the professionals at Orlando Health through, through Skyler and say, you know, I need help with this. I need help with um, diet because it's causing stress and that's causing mental stress. Or I need help with, uh, you know, uh, psychiatry, mental performance or physical performance as well. And it's just, it's all related. The, the mental side is intimately related to your recovery score and your, your potential to perform. So talking about physical, um, 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 how to say it, performance, uh, Skylar, um, uh, to what extent should physical health uh, and fitness metrics be considered in esports? And then what kind of uh, WHOOP data or data that is collected by WHOOP um, uh, that can be used to prevent, because now, I mean, yes, we're understanding the performance right now, but also part of this is to prevent um, injuries from happening in the future. That's usually what kind, this is kind of the metrics that we're collecting to understand, but also preventing in the future. Um, so are there any injuries that can happen when it comes to esports? What are these injuries? Uh, whether they're physical or mental, uh, like, uh, I mean, I, I don't know if this is a correct thing, mm -hmm. way to say it. Uh, uh, and how important is that fitness and physical health is uh, uh, for uh, esports? Yeah, I think it's important that we start off by defining what injury is, right? Mm -hmm. And and again, what is sports? It's trying to find the, the pinnacle of human ability. Well, what's the other side? How do we know we've gone far enough, right? Yes. We're trying to push the, the body to its limits. We always say that. Okay, what's just past the limits? Injury. Yeah. So a lot of times we've discovered a lot by finding these injuries and saying, okay, that's the, the system. That's the part we're pushing. That's what we're developing. So we want to make the capacity of that tissue, of that organ, of that system, whatever it is, even greater, even greater, even greater, so it can handle more and more. But we don't find that until we find injury. So now we look at what what is that and what's that comparable in esports. And really we look at that comparable to be overuse injuries in sports, right? And where do we see that grind in the body? Where do we see those systems start to fail, right? Mm -hmm. And sleep being one of the biggest ones, right? Where we're looking at a screen, a screen with blue lights that we know affect our ability for our brain to shut off. We look at sleep latency. Exactly. And that's one of the biggest metrics in WHOOP is to say, how long does it take me to, to go to sleep, right? How to, to reach stage one and stage two, right? So how do we detect sleep latency? Yeah, so WHOOP helps you do that by saying, how long does it take for you to even body to shut down, heart rate to regulate, um, and for you to, to, to stop moving that your body can start to recover, right? And we know that blue light from screens yes. prolongs that because our, our brain takes that in as daylight and we think that it's still light outside and we're still wired to keep going and keep functioning all day long right? So then that affects our sleep. And then we start to see sleep deprivation in shades of gray, right? Okay. So that becomes the injury that we're looking at, hmm, right? Interesting. And, and, and even as far as, even injury as far as lower reaction time is also a form of injury because it is um, lower performance, right? When we pull a hamstring, I can't perform anymore, right? So if we correlate it like that. There's a lot of deficiencies that we cause by doing too much, which is overuse, so it's very much comparable to everything that we see in traditional sports. Amazing. Um, I mean, 
I'm looking at the time. I feel like I have so many questions, but I have to <laughs> like speed it up. Uh, Sean, I'm going to go to yep. player-coach relationship. Mm -hmm. And how can coaches use the data that is collected from Whoop to motivate their players? What are they looking at specifically? How can they use it to improve? I mean, yes, we understand that the players look at their data mm -hmm. trying to improve their performance. Yes, we understand that we have a whole team of professionals that is... Uh, also trying to explain and provide support to the to the players, but also the coaches as well play a big role in uh, in in this. Uh, so we talked about uh, the AI coach uh, that Whoop has. Uh, I, I think it's called the Whoop coach. So uh, how is this? How coaches use that data, and what is the role of the AI coach here or the Whoop coach in in all of this? Yeah, and I, I think, you know, one of the things that uh, is difficult with eSports specifically is uh, not until the collegiate level do you typically have coaches. Mm -hmm. So a lot of what you do as an, uh, an up-and-coming athlete in eSports is it's peer culture. So you're, you're working with other middle schoolers or high schoolers to, you know, learn how to play a game and play it in a, in a productive way and, and so forth. And once you get access to coaches and you get to the collegiate level in performance matters, that's when you can start to use something like uh, Whoop's algorithms to just see how far do I want to push my athletes this day. And one of the nice things about having the AI algorithm is you can look at, how, like, I have this level of capacity for the day. Um, Whoop is suggesting I attain this much strain. And typically strain comes from exercises or mm -hmm. working out, but it also comes from activities like playing video games. So I, I know I played a lot, I, pl I still play a lot of video games, and the strain that's accumulated in that is equivalent to strain that you would accumulate in terms of like, you know, working out physically. Okay. It's a different type of strain, but it still adds to that total strain for that day. Okay. And so from a coaching perspective, I want to make sure I get my athletes, uh, and, and Skylar has a, a great way of saying it, like the, the amount that you want to reach in that strain that particular day. Do you want to cover that real quick? <laughs> Go for it. Sure. I mean, I mean, so we want to make sure that that, that optimum level of, of strain is helps to maintain our bodies as well. And so, again, we want to be always be operating at that 70 to 80 percent of things because that's where we're not sleepy, we're not drowsy, right? We're awake, we're moving across all systems, but we're not stressed and we're not burning through fuel, right? Okay. So, again, um, we, we want to make sure that, that we – we are hitting that optimum level of strain. And for Whoop to be able to help us identify that piece is such a useful tool for us across the board to be able to say, okay, listen, you are, um, are hitting your optimum level because if you don't hit enough and you don't strain yourself enough that day, your capacity actually comes down over time. Right, okay. so you get less fit. Okay, think about it from lifting weights. All right, I don't maintain that strength if I don't do anything. I sit on the couch forever. Right, that's true. That's not enough strain. Right, that's true. If I lift too much weight, I'm going to pull a muscle. So that optimum amount of strain is the same thing from a stress level. And the, and the nice thing about uh, heart rate being the the tie in for all of this is that it's a systemic measure. So it doesn't really matter if I'm using muscles or stress here or emotional stress or visual or any of that. My heart rate's going to be affected. So this is a very uh, unifying metric for the whole body to say, I'm not sure what piece of it is. We can figure that out. But something puts you into stress level. But it was enough stress to maintain you, and that's okay. Hmm. That's the Goldilocks zone we want to hit. I love it. Um so when we are um, talking about all this data that we're collecting, there is always a security and privacy concern. Um, I mean, um, whether we like it or not, uh, uh, there is that uh, whole thing of thinking that this is a third party um, company software that is collecting all this data about you or about our athletes. I mean, my understanding is through the Whoop technology is that the athlete can choose to share some data and not share some data. Uh, and that actually, if they're not sharing that, that does not give that holistic view for the coaches and everyone else to look at the performance generally. So how uh, are you, um, and um, Skyler or you, Sean, how are we navigating this? How are we um, 
looking at the whole privacy concern and how are we giving the coaches that view where now they're understanding the performance and really trying to give uh, uh, the right uh, recommendation to our athletes. Yeah, so I think it's very important, and it's funny to tie this back to the evolution of uh, sports technology and that, again, it started in cardiovascular measures, yes. which is very much based around EKGs, EKG. which is mm -hmm. very much, you know, your HIPAA-compliant data. And uh, now that, that we've evolved this and we've figured out new metrics that, that aren't even really used in a HIPAA-compliant medical way um, into that level yet, it's still... S it's still the user's data and that mindset still exists and ex exists across all pro sports where they want to protect their data for for contract negotiations right they want to protect their data for performance reviews um, and it's also their health data and for us as a, as a healthcare organization it's even that much more important because we want everyone to know we're always looking at the the privacy of data across all things obviously medical related data is obvious we want to protect that and keep that private but even this even though it's it's not technically at that level. We want everyone to know it's your choice to share that data for us to help you. Yes. And, and we want them to make that jump, but only when they're ready to. Because if they're not, they're probably not um, ready enough to make the changes they need to anyway. Right. So those are always good hallmarks of you're ready to make a change when you're ready to share your data because it's your choice. And then one thing that we talked about earlier you were explaining is that sometimes this data can be used, as you said, to, uh, for contract negotiation. For me, I was not aware until you explained it to me, is that they look really to determine how like, kind mm -hmm. of, I guess, a salary uh, for like an athlete is and so on. Um, so, but here we really are not doing any of that. Um, yeah. Like uh, yeah. Orlando Health and the Whoop technology, it's up to the athlete to share what they share, uh, and uh, and then to uh, for us to be able to help them with their performance. Yeah, the professional level, you know, millions of dollars on the line. You're looking at every every metric ever to make your decisions on where to spend the organization's money. And we're blessed at this level to be able to help these elite level athletes without any of that. Uh, you know, understand over, their overhead. own health. That's right. Understand their own yeah. body. And the goal health. is knowledge, education, and exactly. improvement. And that's exactly. that's huge for us to just be able to focus on that with not any of the other detractors. Perfect. I mean, um, I'm going to skip many and I see uh, we have <laughs> a huge number of questions from our uh, audience. Uh, one last question I wanted to ask you, Sean, is that emerging technologies, mm -hmm. you know, I always go back mm -hmm. to how can people join uh, this field? What kind of uh, skills help with this? How can emerging technologies now improve the uh, performance metrics and what is the future of perform performance metrics? Yeah, I mean, uh, so the, these, uh, especially when it comes to wearable technologies, the integration into our life is, is, is we're just there. We're, we're at the, we're scratching the surface. Mm -hmm. And I, I see a lot of, of different, um, you know, components coming in where you're looking at, a mod you know, shifting the lights in your house based off of when your optimal sleep time is with actual real data, not just predicted data, not just saying, oh, it's 8 p.m., let's do this and let's start shutting things down. It's based off of what Whoop is telling yes. the, the other devices in your house. And one of the reasons we went with Whoop is they do, if, if we want to, they do provide access to the raw data so we can have our emerging tech students actually you know, start projects like that. And I think it's fascinating. I think we're just scratching the surface of this. And there's um, when it, I mean, we're going to see things that we're not even thinking about in one year. In five years, it's going to just be part of everyday life where, you know, combined with eye tracking and detection of objects in space, you're getting predictive models about what you should avoid and what you not avoid without, you know, really doing you're doing much. it anyway. Yeah. Skylar, what's the future of performance metrics? Yeah, I, th I think what we're really excited about within this field is two things. Is one is to be able to see again that reaction the body's having. Well, uh, 
scaling wearable technology like motion analysis and wearable EMG, seeing how the muscles react to that stress, seeing how your knee stability reacts to different stresses on things is the future. And now we can compare that and merge that with your performance data. How much work did you do? How much reaction did you have? Do a lot of work and have a lot of reaction? Fair enough. Do a lot of work and have a low reaction? It, for a game? Great. Mm -hmm. Okay. We want to maintain? I didn't do enough. Right? And then have a, uh, do a little bit of work, have a lot of reaction, let's have a talk. Right? Mm -hmm. And so that gives us a great insight into the, the body's ability, the capacity to keep up with that stress, the right amount of stress. And then the future past that is to take that data and then have that in real time inform interventions, whether it's uh, neuromuscular stem or, you know, pneumatic boots for recovery or actual medical intervention, right? Based on one, what your body's gone through, but two, in real time how it's reacting to that intervention. That's the future so that we know how much dosage is perfect for that person no matter what it is. Wow. I mean, it's impressive. Like I have all of these ideas and now like <laughs> let's start working on that. But uh, it's time for questions from the, our online audience. Uh, I mean, we have um, people who are monitor, monitoring all your questions on all uh, the uh, platforms, LinkedIn, uh, YouTube, and uh, Facebook, and feel free to put your questions if you haven't. Uh, so the first question, and um, gentlemen here, uh, whoever feels comfortable with answering that question, please go ahead. Do you foresee a future where WHOOP would notify your doctor or Orlando Health on its own? Well, I think we're, we're basically there, to be honest. I mean, I mean, we are, for the athletes that, again, choose to opt into the team-based dashboard, we're reviewing that data in real time. We're planning on meeting with our eSports athletes once a month to advise them, to give them insight and actionable and direction on what to do with their data okay. and how to be the best athlete. So it's basically notifying us now, um, calling Orlando Health Sean uh, as part of my performance health team and the rest of my specialists being also our nutrition performance um, specialist on what to do to help them. It's uh, That info is directly um, piped to us when the athlete chooses to share that data. Yeah, it, it's interesting. Whoop has a, uh, <clears throat> a system where you can actually input your doctor's address and it will feed them data Amazing. before your physical. That's great. And, and so it's, it's not necessarily automated and flagged right now for that doctor, but I'm sure it's going to be in the future. So if there's things that, that like that, kind of an emergency, or for example, like do you yeah. expect it to go? Mm -hmm. Things that any of your medical professionals are looking for, they can say, okay, I want to be notified when this, this, and this occurs. Happens, yeah. Very similar to you know what we would do in a you know a cardiology test at home. So yeah, it's 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 there already, but it's just going to get better. And other companies like Apple and whatnot are doing that, but I'm really proud of this partnership where we are pioneering how to do this at the eSports team level and that direct connection to your point of that data to my performance health team helps us make actionable insight as quickly as possible. Okay, thank you. The next question, oh wow, I like this question. <laughs> How might wearable technology influence the design of games themselves? And then could yeah. game developers leverage health data to create more personalized and adaptive gaming experiences? Yeah, if I might take the first one because yes. I've got a couple of graduate students that are interested in this. It, it, sometimes we're just not stressed enough. And there's, a, there's an optimal level of engagement we need and one of those is challenge. Yes. And challenge is, a lack of challenge is going to the gym and not pushing enough weight. Over-challenging yourself is going in and pushing too much weight to where you injure yourself. And everybody wants to be there right at that cusp of like failure and, and success. And uh, a big part of that is just, are you pushing yourself hard enough? And if you're monitoring, we talked about HRV earlier, and you're not stressed and you're not under strain, let's up the difficulty a little bit. Let's, let's push you there. Mm. Um, now, I know... Kids don't want to hear this, but if you're not getting enough sleep, let's shut off the game and you don't get access to your tools anymore. I mean, trust me. <laughs> so, and I'm sure we mom, all have kids and moms out there that. would love that. But, you know, when it comes to, you know, integrating into the gaming environment, I think the low hanging fruit there is modulating challenge mm -hmm. based off of your physiological metrics and saying, OK, esports gamer, uh, you haven't really been challenged. You, you haven't been pushed to a stressful state this you know today and it's like going to the gym you haven't hit 180 heartbeats today so 
you know, let's push you there. Let's 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 ramp this up a little bit. And HRV and and that particular measure is a much better measure measure than heart rate. So, so could game developers leverage health data to create more personalized and adaptive gaming experiences? 100%. I mean, once we realize how you're reacting to something and we can tie that data get together, then we can do exactly what Sean said. We start to talk about um, challenge, right, and uh, applicability, but also hitting that Goldilocks zone that is right for them. My, my, talk about youth athletes. We try this all the time in traditional sports, and my son is on both sides of the curve where he's a active soccer player but also um, very deep into eye racing. Mm -hmm. And so from an engagement standpoint, can we make it just challenging enough to where we don't lose them by making it too challenging. But also, we know there's an excitement level to that. And physiology defines excitement, right? Mm -hmm. So now we can measure that. We can make sure they're in the right excitable zone, okay. not too much. And then it would be fascinating for the game to actually back off or accelerate whatever pace that is, right, as you go, as fatigue sets in. Or maybe you cross a barrier and it's like, you know what, you've done enough for now. There's a lot of interesting things, I think, that have been great with gamification. Of, of games like that where you can only play so many times this day, right? Uh, you can only spend so many coins to play so many uh, bouts of this this day. Well, they're going for longer buy-in for mm -hmm. you to come back every day to play that game, okay? Yeah. But if we talk about only doing enough, I'm spending enough mental points to where I'm going to be fatigued after so much, okay? Tomorrow I can come back and play a little bit more mm. and a little bit more. I'm helping to build that capacity over time. I love it. Okay, next question. Does WHOOP have any field testing, uh, actual test results on esports athletes, and have they seen an improvement? So the biggest thing I've seen is that there was a study at the University of Arkansas that compared um, uh, cardiovascular loads and responses to uh, Olympic cyclists. And we were seeing very similar responses in cardiovascular loads in esports athletes um, with, all, uh, all, albeit, um, lesser capacity than, than an Olympic um, cyclist, but similar percentages of heart rate um, and heart rate per, uh, percent of max over time compared to that of an uh, uh, Olympic cyclist. So uh, I was very encouraged by that to say, okay, now we can approach things physiologically from that aspect. And I have not seen anything directly with WHOOP use of that. That was a very clinical study with, okay. with EKG approach. Okay. But then knowing that WHOOP has um, done a lot of validation studies yeah. with EKG to correlate that data, I uh, felt good that we can make some um, very good correlations with the approach on what we do with the data. Sean? Yeah, that, part of our discussion with Whoop early on was their willingness to partner with us here and do research. So that's something we look forward to in the future. And the, if you go to Whoop's website, which I, I had told Whoop I would plug their website, just whoop.com, they have a lot of studies and you, you, YouTube podcasts where they, they, they cover various things that impact collegiate lives. Mm. And w some of the most fascinating studies is the consumption of alcohol up to three to four days before an event, where that consumption negatively impacts that event by 10 to 15%. Oh, wow. and, and that's okay. something it's like, wow, I, I, I thought it was 24 hours and yeah. half-life and things exit my system. No, you end up, when you, when you take incredibly negative things into your body, it has a cascading effect for days. And it's it's... You, know, oh, wow. you go four days later and and you're not performing and it's it's eye opening and that and when I look at those studies, the outcome of them is changes in behavior and th that's why I really like what you know some of these technology companies are doing is running those experiments in collegiate environments where performance does matter, and college students you know they have certain activities. The biggest one is still lack of sleep, the other one's intake of alcohol. Um, and then other stressful events like exams, you know, and studying and mm -hmm. all those things are incredibly taxing on the body. Mm. So and they, all that research is being done. So it's great, great to read about it when it comes out. Amazing. What advice do you have for someone who wants to get into tech in the healthcare industry? Yeah, for me, I think um, I've, I do a lot of advising for sports technology companies, and it's such a, a, a good, uh, exciting, evolving. Um, group is that I would say reach out, be very proactive with reaching out to those companies and and 
really ask how you can be involved in any beta trials or, or any ex experiences. They're always looking for people, especially if you're active, to come and test and be involved in the development of those things. And that's how you can really get exposed to what it is. And once you become exposed to that and, and apply it to you, the industry is so new and so evolving, you become an expert early on it's that that young of an industry so it's a great time for anybody to get into this sports monitoring healthcare monitoring space okay I would answer that from our perspective when we're talking healthcare uh, tech. Um, I look at it from depending, for example, if we're talking about wearables, that's the artificial intelligence and data science. Mm -hmm. So we have different programs, whether in the bachelor, the computer science with the concentration in artificial intelligence, or the masters, uh, the computer science master uh, with a focus on artificial intelligence, machine learning, data science, and human computer interaction. But also, we have also from the user experience and uh, the game design masters as well that uh, can open that as well. Healthcare technology is also from a training perspective as well. So if you are talking about the um, how to use the simulation in VR and uh, AR, so that can be uh, the simulation visualization program. Uh, but if you have these degrees already or if you are already part of these programs, I would say being in touch, as Skylar said, of uh, reaching out to these companies, understanding, being part of these programs or these initiatives to understand what exactly is being done, and building your network. It's very important for, you, for uh, students and graduates to build network and be able to get into uh, this field. Um, okay, next question. Um, I would take two more questions only. Uh, if Whoop is trying your pulse and movement, will it predict that you are going to crash early or tell you to adjust your behaviors? Uh, yes, it does. And I, actually, I was sleep deprived last night and I'm already getting an alert that I should go to bed earlier uh, in order to make up some of that sleep because I have sleep debt. And so it, it's very good at that. The more you wear these tracking devices, and typically it's about 30 days to get that baseline and really understand what are you doing to your body over 30 days, the better those predictive models come because it can see like bumps in the data and say, oh, wow, this was a huge day for you. Your recovery score is going to be really low tomorrow, so you better start making up for it now. And that just could be you know, you're pushing yourself too hard in a specific event. And then, all right, I've got to somehow you know, get to bed a half hour earlier, 45 minutes earlier. Mm. And you don't have to hit it completely. You know, I, I was actually watching a, a, a pod or listening to a podcast where it's like the, the goal is to try to get at least 15 more minutes or 20 more minutes. If you can't get that 45 minutes more of sleep, whatever you can get is, is good for your body to make up that debt and help you with your, your scores for the following day. Yeah, and I would say too for us is that th that um, those alerts and those things like that are helpful. And one of the correlations I wanted to make earlier was that how do we connect the esports to other types of athletes? And Sean and I actually had the privilege of advising for a professional race car driver. Okay. And so from the ability of someone who is sitting most of the time but at the pinnacle of their sport, making uh, split-second reactions, and, and Josh Williams is the driver who is fantastic to work with, seeing how we can work with him to, to implement these type of changes with him and use those alerts to say, okay, there is some sleep debt or something we need to address right now. How do we do that within your schedule, in your demands to make the right changes we need to make has given us huge insights into how to do that within the eSports world, more specifically than I ever thought w would come from a, a race car driver, but it's been phenomenal. I mean, when you think about it, it is kind of similar. Like mm -hmm. they're sitting and like it's a lot of, of like being quick and fast about decision making mm -hmm. and so on. So it is, it is a similar sport. Okay, one last question. Um, are you okay with that? Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> How does health insurance factor in, in with Whoop or other wearables, thinking about liability? Yeah, so right now, again, everything's pre-injury, pre, um, pre-diagnosis, right? It, it's really tracking and it's your data and it's not, again, um, FDA uh, or, or HIPAA compliant necessary, right? Okay. A lot of these companies go above and beyond to, to go to those links just for um, 
for efficacy and, and best practices, but it's all pre what we call medical diagnosis. It can give you insight into seeing a doctor. It can, it can direct you to um, get further diagnostic testing, but it is not diagnostic testing by itself, okay. right? It is, it is monitoring and measuring on the preventative side of yes. things, which is where we live most of the time in sports and why it applies um, really, really well in that space. Thank you. Well, thank you so much. This has been amazing. I mean, like I, I can see that there are so many more questions, but uh, we can collect all these questions and then we will send them to you if you're okay with that so we can get some of the answers and send them to, back to our audience. I am really grateful, Skylar, for your time today and uh, your expertise in this. I really enjoyed everything, uh, like the conversation. And same with you, Sean, uh, Dr. Sean Stafford. Thank you so much for being with us today. Uh, I hope you uh, enjoyed our episode. Uh, and as I mentioned, if you have more questions, feel free to leave them uh, on the. Feel free to leave them on uh, on one of these platforms, and we'll collect them and get you the uh, the answers. Um, well, thank you so much for following our episode today. This is Dr. Haifa Mammar from Full Sail University. Have a great day. <laughs>